Rub up your engines! All right, today I got an interesting car. It's a 2021 Subaru WRX STI that a young man bought, and he's real happy with it. Now, he had to pay a lot, but he got a lot for his other car. He got like five grand more than what he owed on it. So, if you're thinking about upgrading, definitely now's the time to do it. But he did it before the big coronavirus hit. So he paid 41 for this, and now they're going for well over 50, the same vehicle. Now a stock WRX STI of this year is 310 horsepower. Zippy little engine in this thing. And the cool thing is it's a four door car. Looks like a normal car. Their sport version has a lot less horsepower. To me, that's kind of contradictory. You would think the sports one with the rear wheel drive would have more horsepower, but no, it has less. The people that know these things know these are much faster than the sport ones. That's why I kind of laugh about the Toyota 86 whatever you want to call it which is the same vehicle that's rear wheel drive it really doesn't have enough horsepower as far as I'm concerned this thing on the other hand does you can see it's a beautiful looking car but it's also practical it's got four doors and you can actually fit people in the back too and since it's a symmetrical all-wheel drive this thing handles like a dream you got the rear drive and you got the front wheel drive and if you know anything about Subaru they're the company that really went full bore into all-wheel drive. Their little sports rear-wheel drive is basically the only vehicle they make that's two-wheel drive. All-wheel drive is their thing, and they know what they're doing. Now, of course, it's all-wheel drive. This isn't a drift car. Some guys get the cheaper ones because they're rear-wheel drive. This thing is much faster, and it handles much better. And that asymmetric all-wheel drive, these things really handle well. And if you want, you can lock the rear differential, change the power to the rear, Hey, these are technological marvels. They're not just some simple little thing. We'll look under the hood, and look, you don't have a stupid prop rod. It holds itself up. There's a big plus. It's your traditional Subaru boxer engine, two cylinders on each side, but you can see it's turbocharged. There's the intercooler. They have a lot of stuff fit in. But you can tell this is a New England car, because look, you can see the strut towers. The nuts and bolts are already starting to corrode, and those are aftermarket ones. <laughs> Be wary of what you buy aftermarket. It may not be coated all that well. And check it out, it's old school. It's got a power steering pump that's hydraulic. Look, hydraulic pumps work perfectly fine. They generally last forever. Truthfully, I've never had to change a power steering pump on a Subaru, ever. When I go to complex electronics, they're gonna break, cost a fortune. These work perfectly fine. And since this thing probably puts out about 340 horsepower, do you really care about losing maybe one and a half at max running the pump? I don't think so. Now he put a Cobb titanium exhaust on it. It's got a great sound and when you rev it up, He does have a rev limiter, he doesn't want to blow his engine up. He's not as dumb as many young people are. He doesn't want to blow his engine up. But he does want to strangle his brother, because his brother ran into the back here, and he just did this to cover it up before he gets the actual body work done. Well, we know it goes fast, but it stops pretty fast too. Look at the size of these calipers, drilled rotors. This thing has no problem cornering. When you combine this with the anti-lock brake traction control, and asymmetric all-wheel drive. We'll talk about gas mileage. It's rated at 1622, and he's right about there. He averages about 18 driving around. It's not a gas miser. With what well, he's probably got 340, stocks 310. You're not gonna get hot gas mileage in an all-wheel drive setup. And of course, most people who own them are gonna drive like him extremely fast. And being the STI. Of course, it only comes in a standard. You get a standard transmission, and unfortunately, it really only runs best on premium gas. He's got it all souped up, fancy exhaust system, remapped stuff. It's set to run on high test gas. Now, you could set it up to run on regular gas, but then it wouldn't be as fast. What's the point of buying a car like this and not driving it fast? It makes absolutely no sense. That always makes me cringe when I see somebody in a souped up sports car and they're driving 30 miles an hour in a 45 zone. You know, you wanna strangle them. It's like, why did you buy that car in the first place? Gas mileage isn't something that you're buying this car for. Now, these come with summer tires. He's in Rhode Island, so, he bought himself 
yourself a complete other set of all season tires because if you remember anything that I talk about tires and front wheel drive all wheel drive rear wheel drive is actually the most important thing about driving in snow is the tires if you ran these summer tires in the winter it doesn't matter that it's all wheel drive it's still gonna start sliding all over the place you got to have more aggressive tire so he's got tires that he has on their own separate rims that he uses in the winter so he doesn't slide all over the place with all this power it would be sliding now he's put coil overs on it aftermarket this thing rides rough he admits it rides rough but it's for handling race car when you're cornering you'll see when we drive it around you don't get one of these for a smooth ride either these are like baby four door race cars it's kind of like their competition to the Honda Civic Type R. Now, this Honda Civic Type R is even more of a race car than this thing is. But similar attributes, except of course the Honda is front wheel drive only, and this is all wheel drive. This is actually a better handling one. The Civic Type R is a little bit faster than this, but this is a much better handling vehicle. Now, if you want to get your hand on one of these things, you better hurry up because 2022s. That's it. They say they're going to go electrified and they're not going to make these things anymore. So <laughs> you better hurry up. And it wouldn't be a bad idea, even if you're not sure, because if you do buy one, I can guarantee you the prices are going to go up and up and up. These are collector's items to begin with, and they're not making them anymore. As long as you keep insurance and don't wreck it, it's only going to go up in value. They already have insanely high resale value even before coronavirus hit. And now, if you're ever thinking about getting, get it now. And if you don't want it, sell it and you can make some money on the thing. So we'll start her up. Of course, it starts right up. You get in bumps. <laughs> you can see the camera shaking. It's a handling car. It's not a riding car. Of course, it's totally smooth on a smooth road. I'm not saying that, but this isn't one hey, for riding around in Rhode Island all that fast. Because the roads here are a bit weak just cruising around hey this reminds me of an old 60s porsche it's got the same type of engine with his exhaust it's got a really nice sound as you can see it's not a gas miser little engine but he's averaging 17.7 here and here we go well <laughs> this thing's got some power I got the picket fences and of course accelerating is no problem <laughs> sometimes it's just too much and the police will come after you <laughs> and like I said it's smooth as can be it handles great on the highway when it's as long as it's not bumpy it's an excellent handling vehicle too bad it's not raining we could show you what it does in the rain but that's another day now for those of you into doing donuts even on dry pavement this baby has so much dark it can do donuts on dry pavement but we don't want to show those bad things to give people ideas of doing incorrect things so the owner just told me he can do it if he has to <laughs> and it's a great day for going to the beach hey nice sunny day if only they let you go on the beach with your car here in rhode island we could have some fun but that's illegal so we're not gonna do that all in all it's a good sleeper car because when you're just sitting it's quiet and it is a four-door you're gonna fool some people who don't understand about subaru stis so now you know pretty much all you need to know about one of these wrx stis like i said if you want to get one you better hurry up because 2022 is the end they said they're going to electrify they're not going to make them anymore and you really don't have to worry about losing money they're well made to begin with especially with the standard tranny subaru's weak points were always their automatic transmissions these stis are all standard transmissions they're not going to make them the value will go up even more they already had high resale value to begin with if you want a four door you can ride your kid around in especially if your kid likes going fast carry a lot of stuff sure not great gas mileage but hey you know you can't have everything and here's some bonus questions and answers. Jerome says, I need help with slow to start problem. I got a 2012 Chevy Silverado, 113,000 miles. I live in Montana. When I returned from my trip to California, it stutters for one or two seconds, then it starts up. All right, it's running too rich. Have your fuel injectors pressure cleaned because if it's pouring too much fuel in, any of them that's what will happen it stutters because it gets too much fuel but then it starts up a lot of times cleaning fixes it it could also be a bad mass airflow sensor have that tested because if both banks are running rich the mass airflow sensor feeds both banks and both banks use the same information so if it's running rich it's going to make them both run rich have the mass airflow sensor either cleaned it can be cleaned i have a video on that or replaced they're not that expensive on those you can get them at discount auto parts stores generally it's one of those two that do it either cleaning or replacing the mass airflow sensor will often fix that problem 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.